So what's going to end up happening is that your front cylinders are going to run lean and your rear cylinders are going to run rich. You've got to remember that your air fuel ratio gauge will read an average of what your exhaust is. So if you have one or two or five cylinders running lean and the other one's running super rich, the O2 sensor might actually read perfectly dead nuts where it's supposed to be, but the actual cylinders themselves are going to be completely off. You can imagine that if the rear is pouring fuel and the front is leaning out, that's bad news for the front two cylinders and that's bad news for the rear two cylinders. Speaking of the rear cylinders, I'm actually running really, really large jets on the secondary side. And the reason for that and the reason I needed that second power valve is because since I don't have that second power valve and I was needing more fuel, I was reading the plugs on the corners and the backside was leaning out a little bit. So I drilled out the jets to get me that extra amount of fuel that I needed to balance things out. So I'm running like 150 thousandths in the rear. It's not really a jet size anymore. It's 150 thousandths. And then I'm running the stock jetting with the boost activated power valve in the front. If I was running power valves front and rear, I wouldn't have to go so high on the jetting in the rear. But when you don't have options, you just have to make things work. So after I've said all that, I still haven't answered the question, what do you do about that dead spot between the primaries and the secondary circuit? So to do that, I'm going to need to explain to you guys how a mechanical secondary works. All right, so I have my old carburetor on the left and I have the new Proform 750 on the right. So let me go ahead and show you how a typical mechanical secondary opens up. So you're on the primary side and the primary side is going to travel to about 40% opening before the secondary side starts to open up. So what I've done on my old carburetor, check this out. You're opening it up, opening it up, opening it up. And as soon as you get to about like, let's say 20% or so, the secondary start opening up. So let's take a look at this again a little bit slower. So I'm opening it up and there you go. So we're going to look at the new carburetor again and look at that. And look how much further you have to open a stock carburetor before the secondary side opens up. Well, you guys are wondering why is that important? So there's a tuning aspect when we're tuning mechanical secondary carburetors and that is secondary tip in. So we all know about the T-slot and the IFRs on the primary side, but a lot of people don't realize that we have the same circuits on the secondary side. If you guys open the throttle of a mechanical secondary carburetor, you guys will be able to see that there is a T-slot right there. What is the T-slot for if it's not for idling? Well, number one, it is for idling if it's a four-corner idle carburetor. Number two, it's for the secondary tip-in. So as you're accelerating, when you get past that 40%, you start going into the transition circuit before you actually start sucking on the main jets through the boosters. And that's true for both the primary and the secondary side of the carburetor. On the primary side, you're off, you start going off idle, you're feeding off the idle feed restrictors. And then once you accelerate to a certain amount, You'll, you start feeding off of the main jets. On the secondary side circuit, it does the same thing. But the problem is that on a stock style carburetor, by the time you start opening up those secondaries, you've already run super lean on the primaries. And the only solution to that is to jet up the primaries. So the solution to all of that is to make the secondaries come in sooner and take advantage of that secondary tip-in. So now when you're off idle and you're cruising around, you're still at light throttle. So once you wanna pass a car, you lean on the throttle a little bit more, vacuum drops, power valve opens, adds fuel. So since we don't have that on a blow-through carburetor, you go ahead and you move the secondary circuit in sooner. You drill out the IFRs to match the air fuel ratio that you need when you're leaning it in there. So now when you go to pass a car, instead of relying on the power valve, you're relying on the secondary T-slot. And then if you go further before you get into boost, now you're relying on the secondary jets. So to further illustrate my point, I'm running a standard idle feed restrictor with the standard size hole, probably around 40, 45, maybe 50 thousandths on the idle feed restrictor. Standard gasoline would probably be somewhere around 32, 36. Now we're looking at the secondary circuit and let's go ahead and see if you guys can see the IFR and how much larger it is. So on that secondary tip in, we're at around like 90 or 110 
thousandths on that secondary IFR. And again, that's for the transition circuit to take the place of where your power valve used to be. So in order to accomplish this, I did two things. The first one was to actually drill out a hole that these base plates come with from the factory, but they come undersized so you can drill them out yourself. So that's the first thing that I did. I drilled that out. And the second thing is I made this rod that goes across. So if you try to just move the stock rod that's in here, it'll be too short. And the reason you have to move it to the lower section is because the geometry of the rod changes. If you move the rod lower, it has less of a chance of moving backwards before it moves forward. If you put it on the top hole, it'll move backwards before it moves forward, and then it'll delay the opening. The second thing about the rod is that you have to have a rod that's adjusted perfectly to the ratio that you need. You see that the secondary side has a slot right here, and that slot will allow you to have the rod longer or shorter. The longer the rod, the longer it's going to take that secondary side to open up. You guys can see that I have a little bit of a gap. If I go ahead and bend this rod a little bit more, I will close up that gap and it'll open up even sooner. I basically set it up exactly to where I needed to have it, but on the Proform carburetor that I'm gonna be using, you already have several options. So like I mentioned earlier, once you accelerate, this rod actually moves backwards first before it starts moving forward, as you guys can see right there. You can get different linkage kits that will allow you to run the rod either here or here, and then in the top hole or bottom hole, or you can make your own rod just like I did here out of a vacuum secondary carburetor. I just pulled that rod out, bent it to what I needed it to, and then it worked perfectly fine. There is an aftermarket kit that you can buy that has an adjustable rod, and basically you can put that wherever you want, and then you can tighten it or loosen it to make the rod shorter or longer. And I actually purchased that rod. It was actually like 45 or $55, and I bought it, and I had it in a little box, and I lost it, and so... I never ended up changing out the one that I had, but the one that I had actually worked perfectly fine. I never had any problems with it. And I'm probably gonna do the same thing when I modify this Proform carburetor for it to work. You guys might be asking, why wouldn't they do that from the factory? Why would you need a power valve at all if you can go ahead and do that on a regular carburetor? And the reason for that is fuel economy. On a carburetor that's running, let's say a 40-60 split, the more you rely on your primary jets, the leaner you can run that carburetor, which means your fuel mileage will go up, which means emissions will go down and everybody's happy. Fuel economy is kind of a second thing. You can get a lot of that back, but you have to be very careful on how you drive. In order to make sure the carburetor stays happy and your air fuel ratio stays happy, you got to add that fuel where the fuel is now lacking. So it all compounds one on top of the other. You need a front side power valve to match the rear jetting at wide open throttle. You need to change the throttle position in order to compensate for the missing vacuum operated power valve. Now you need to modify the secondary IFRs so they can feed the T-slot at part throttle. And so there's a lot of things you have to tune for and the easiest way to do that is just hitting it one thing at a time. So I had that other video showing you guys the pyramid of how I tune my carburetors. Tuning a blow through carburetor is almost exactly the same way. So that's why I mentioned, if you guys don't know how to perfectly tune a naturally aspirated carburetor, you guys won't be able to tune a blow through carburetor. So this was a lot of information. I had to split it up into multiple videos, but I hope this ends up helping somebody. Like I said, I'll have links to everything in the description down below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.